attaching a neck facing. This type of facing is applied before setting in a lap zipper. This method provides for a clean, neat finish without excess bulk at the top of the zipper. Join facing pieces at the shoulder. Press seams open and trim to 3 8 inch. Finish the outer edge of the facing with a method suitable to the fabric. The facing can be attached before garment side seams are sewn and before the zipper has been inserted. Place the facing on the garment with right sides together, matching shoulder seams and notches. Check to be sure seams will match, then pin the two layers together. Notice that center front can be marked by cutting a small notch or clip into the seam allowance when cutting out the garment. Be sure that the raw edges are even when pinning the two layers together. The facing can be folded out of the way at center back to remove some of the bulk created by the many layers of fabric. On the left side, fold the end of the facing back so the folded edge is one half inch away from the center back seam line, which is marked with hand basting. This would equal the seam allowance plus one half inch. Then fold the garment seam allowance on center back seam line toward the outside of the garment. The garment seam allowance will overlap the facing. Trim away some of the excess seam allowance from the facing. The left side is now ready to be stitched. There is no folding of the facing or the garment on the right side. So pin the facing to the garment matching the edges at the neckline and at center back. Remember that a lap zipper will be inserted into the center back seam allowance after the facing has been completed. Machine stitch the neckline seam, stitching the facing to the garment as it has been pinned. Stitch slowly and accurately removing the pins as you stitch. To reduce bulk inside the turned facing, layer the seam allowances, making the facing seam allowance the narrowest. Also cut off the ends of the shoulder seam allowance. This also helps to remove bulk from inside the facing. Clip the entire neckline curve about every one half inch to allow the seam allowance to spread after the facing has been turned to the wrong side. Notice that these clips extend all the way to the stitching line. When the facing is turned, the seam allowance must be allowed to spread. Understitch along the neckline seam line. This stitching should be located on the facing about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. This stitching will help in turning the facing and will make it much easier to press the neckline seam and the facing. Hold the fabric taut away from the seam as you stitch. The completed facing will be even with the center back edge on right back. However, on the left back, the finished edge of the facing will be one half inch away from the center back fold on the garment, thus eliminating excess bulk at center back after the zipper has been inserted. The garment is now ready for inserting a lap zipper using the open seam method of application. Attaching a combined neck and armhole facing to a garment with a center opening. This method for attaching a combined neck and armhole facing can be used on any sleeveless garment that has a center back or center front opening. In this method, the facing is applied before the side seams are stitched.
but after stitching the shoulder seams. With right sides together, stitch the facing pieces together at the shoulder seam and press the seams open. Trim the facing shoulder seam allowances to about 3 eighths of an inch. Finish the outer edge of the facing by a method suitable to the fabric. The side seams of the facing and garment will be stitched after the facing has been attached. Notice that the shoulder seams of the garment have been stitched and pressed open. With right sides together, pin the facing to the garment at the neckline and armhole seams. Pin the neckline first, matching shoulder seams, notches, and center front markings. Notice that the center front can be marked by cutting a small notch or clip into the seam allowance when cutting out the garment. Next, pin the armhole seam, first pinning the area below the notches with raw edges even. When pinning the area above the notches, extend the facing about 1 8 inch beyond the garment edge. This will make the facing a little smaller than the garment in the shoulder area, which will help prevent the facing from showing on the outside when the garment is completed. Stitch the neckline and both armhole seams as they have been pinned. Layer all seam allowances with the facing seam allowance the narrowest. The garment seam allowance may be left the full width or trimmed slightly narrower. Clip the seam allowances at regular intervals in the curved areas. The clips are usually spaced about every one half inch and extend to within a thread of the stitching line. Both the armhole and neckline seam allowances should be clipped. Turn the facing right side out by carefully pulling the back section through the shoulder area between the facing and garment, working the seam to the outside. Repeat this procedure for the other side. To aid in pressing and to help hold the facing to the wrong side, understitch the neckline and armhole seams where possible. The stitching will be located on the facing about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. Be sure that the seam allowances are turned toward the facing. Hold the fabric taut away from the seam line as you stitch. After completing the understitching, open up the facings at the underarm seam and pin the front to the back along the seam line, matching the armhole seam and notches. If it is necessary to fit the garment before stitching, place the pins parallel to and directly on the seam line. You can then try the garment on as it is pinned before stitching. Stitch the bodice side seam as pinned. Press the seam open and fold the facing back down over the seam and hand stitch the facing to the seam allowance. This method of applying a facing provides a neat finish to the neckline and arm's eye eliminating the bulk of two separate facings. Attaching a combined neck and armhole facing to a garment with no center opening. This method for attaching a combined neck and armhole facing can be used on any sleeveless garment that has no center opening. With this method, the facing is applied before the shoulder seams are stitched, but after stitching the side seams. 
Join the underarm seams of the facing. Press the seams open and trim the facing seam allowance to about 3 8 inch. Notice that the shoulder seams are not stitched at this time. Finish the outer edge of the facing with a method suitable to the fabric. With right sides together, pin the facing to the garment at the neckline and armhole seams. Matching notches, center front and center back markings. Start the pinning 1 and 5 8 inches from the raw edge at the shoulder seam. Pin the neckline, first having the garment edges even. Next, pin the lower part of the armhole seam below the notches, again with garment edges even, matching the side seams and the notches. In the area above the notch, extend the facing about 1 8 inch beyond the garment edge. This will make the facing a little smaller than the garment in the shoulder area, which will help prevent the facing from showing on the outside. When the pinning is completed, stitch the neckline and armhole seams beginning and ending the stitching 1 and 5 8 inches from the raw edge at the shoulder seam. Back stitch at each end of the stitching to secure the threads. Clip into the seam allowance at the point where the stitching started. Layer the seam allowance with the facing seam allowance the narrowest. The garment seam allowance may be left the full width or trimmed slightly narrower. Clip both the neckline and armhole curves at regular intervals, clipping to within a thread of the stitching line. This will allow the seam allowance to spread after the facing has been turned to the wrong side. Turn the front shoulder area of the garment right side out. Leave the back of the garment still with wrong side out. Slide the front shoulder area up inside the back section and pin the shoulder seams together. You will notice that the bodice front and back seams are pinned together and the facing seams are also pinned together. Stitch the shoulder seam allowances of both the garment and the facing. Press both of the seams open. Then trim the shoulder seam allowances of just the facing to 3 eighths of an inch. With the garment still in the same position, Work the shoulder area out until the unstitched area of the neckline and armhole seams can be stitched by machine. Pin the remaining portion of the seam allowance together. When pinning the armhole seam, extend the facing 1 8 inch beyond the garment edge. Stitch this portion of the neckline and armhole seams. Layer the seam allowances as before and clip the curved portion of the seam. Pull the shoulder seams and facings back to the normal position, working the seam out to the edge. 
to stitch as much of the seam as possible. Press the facing, rolling the seam slightly to the facing side. This method of applying a facing provides a neat finish to the neckline and arm's eye and eliminates any hand stitching. Constructing waistbands. Although many types of waistbands are used in clothing construction, the most common is the one made from a straight strip of fabric with interfacing or backing added to prevent stretching and rolling. The waistband illustrated here has a fold along the top of the band. It is attached on the outside by machine and finished on the inside by hand. To mark the fold line, fold the waistband in half with wrong sides together and press the fold. Cut a strip of interfacing the size of the finished waistband and place on the wrong side of the back waistband. The upper edge of the interfacing will come to the fold line. Machine stitch the interfacing to the band in a zigzag pattern, stitching just the width of the interfacing. This stitching holds the interfacing to the waistband and add stability to the back of the band. Since the stitching is on the back half, it will not be visible from the right side. Use a firm interfacing that is stable in the lengthwise direction. Notice that the interfacing is cut narrow enough so that it is not included in the seam allowance at the lower edge of the waistband. An alternate method is to place the interfacing on the front half of the waistband. The interfacing is cut wider and is included in the seam allowance. Before pinning the waistband to the garment, fit the band around your waist. Check the length and adjust if necessary. Place the right side of the band against the right side of the garment and pin in place. The garment should be slightly larger than the band, so ease the garment to the band. On the left side, the waistband extends beyond the zipper opening by a seam allowance. On the right side, the waistband extends beyond the zipper, the 5 8 inch seam allowance, plus the underlap, which equals 3 fourths to 1 inch, for a total of about 1 and 5 8 inches. When it is desirable to check the fit before sewing, place the pins parallel to and directly on the seam line. The waistband may also be hand-basted to the garment to make it easier to fit. Stitch the waistband to the garment. If the interfacing was placed on the front of the waistband, this stitching will also go through the interfacing. Press the seam open using just the tip of the iron. Then press the seam towards the waistband. Layer the seam allowances, cutting the skirt seam allowance the narrowest. The waistband seam allowance may be left as is or it may be trimmed slightly narrower. Also trim the ends from seams and darts to reduce bulk from the waistline seam. It is always a good idea to check the fit of the garment before completing the layering and trimming. Finish the ends of the waistband by folding the waistband in half along the fold line with right sides together. Notice that the seam allowance joining the band to the skirt is folded up and the seam allowance on the underband is left extended. Stitch the end of the band. On the left side, stitch exactly in line with the placket edge of the garment. 
this end of the band will be even with the edge of the garment. On the right side, notice that the stitching is 3 fourths to 1 inch from the edge of the garment, allowing for an underlap on the waistband. Trim the corner of the waistband diagonally to the stitching line and press the seam open. Then layer the seam allowance and turn the band to the right side, carefully working out the corner. The seam at the end of the band should be rolled slightly to the wrong side. Turn under the seam allowance along the free edge of the band. The fold should lie just above the stitching line so the hand stitching will not show on the outside of the garment. An alternate method to finishing the lower edge of the waistband is to use the selvage edge of the fabric as the finished edge on the inside. Complete the waistband by stitching the band using a blind or a slip stitch. The waistband may also be top stitched for a more decorative effect. Attaching a grosgrain waistline facing. A grosgrain ribbon facing is a quick and easy method of giving a smooth, no waistband finish to skirts and pants. Use grosgrain ribbon 3 fourths to 1 inch wide. Allow enough ribbon to equal your waist measurement plus about 6 inches. Stay stitch the waistline 1 half inch from the raw edge to keep it from stretching. Clip to the stay stitching in the curved areas to allow the seam allowance to spread when it is folded back after the ribbon has been attached. Position the grow grade ribbon along the seam line, overlapping the stay stitching about 1 8 inch. On the right side, the ribbon should extend about one half inch beyond the garment edge. On the left side, allow about one and one half inches of ribbon to extend beyond the zipper placket. To shape the ribbon over the hip area, make two one fourth inch tucks, placing them about one inch on each side of the side seam. Continue pinning around the waistline, adding two more tucks near the other side seam. Machine stitch the ribbon to the garment as it is pinned, stitching close to the edge of the ribbon. Fold the ribbon to the inside and press along the edge. Be sure that the seam is rolled slightly to the wrong side so that none of the ribbon is visible from the outside of the garment. You might find it easier to place the garment over a pressing cushion while pressing the waistline seam. Hand stitch the ribbon to the garment at each of the seam lines. On the right side of the zipper placket, trim out excess bulk created by the zipper and the folded seam allowance. Fold under the one half inch extension at the placket opening and hand stitch the ribbon to the zipper tape. Be sure to check the fit of the garment before trimming the seam allowance and completing the stitching. On the left side, trim out the excess bulk as on the right side. Fold the extended ribbon in half so that there is about one half inch of the folded grosgrain ribbon extending beyond the placket opening.
hand stitch the ribbon to the zipper tape. Continue the hand stitching to the waistline seam, catching the end of the ribbon in the stitching. Attach a hook and eye fastener to the ends of the grow grain ribbon, placing the hook on the left extension. Grow grain ribbon provides an excellent finish to a waistline when a waistband is not desired. The ribbon helps to stabilize the waistline and eliminates much of the bulk created by a facing. Attaching a fitted waistline facing. This type of facing is applied to the waistline of a garment before setting in a lap zipper. This method provides for a clean, neat finish without excess bulk at the top of the zipper. Attach interfacing to the wrong side of the skirt facing pieces. Machine stitch 1 4th inch from the edge at the lower edge of the facing and 1 half inch from the other edges. Trim the interfacing close to the stitching to reduce bulk. Pin the facing pieces together at the side seams. Machine stitch, back stitching at each end to secure the threads. Notice that this stitching is about 1 8 inch deeper than the original machine stitching. Press the seams open. Trim to about 3 8 of an inch. Finish the lower edge of the facing by a method suitable to the fabric. With right sides together, attach the facing to the garment, matching seams and notches along the waistline. The facing can be folded out of the way at the zipper opening to remove some of the bulk created by the many layers of fabric. On the left side, fold the end of the facing back so the folded edge is one half inch away from the seam line, which is marked by hand basting. Then fold the garment seam allowance on the seam line toward the outside of the garment. The garment seam allowance will overlap the facing. Trim away some of the excess seam allowance from the facing. The left side is now ready to be stitched. There is no folding of the facing or the garment on the right side, so pin the facing to the garment matching the edges at the waistline. Remember that a lap zipper will be inserted into the placket opening after the facing has been completed. Machine stitch the waistline seam, stitching the facing to the garment as it has been pinned. To reduce bulk inside the facing, Layer the seam allowances, leaving the garment seam allowance the widest. Clip the curved seam to allow the seam allowance to spread after the facing has been turned to the wrong side. Turn the seam allowances toward the facing and understitch along the seam line. This stitching should be located on the facing about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. This stitching will help in turning the facing and will make it easier to press the waistline seam and facing. Hold the fabric taut away from the seam as you stitch. After attaching the zipper, fold the facing down over the zipper and hand stitch the ends of the facing to the zipper tape. A hook and eye fastener can be attached at the waistline to complete the facing.